Hi, welcome. This is Kevin with Matt Practical. Today we're going to be looking at symbols in Illustrator. So let's start up a new Illustrator document. So let that rip. So everything that we export out of GIS into the graphics software like Illustrator is going to come out in either points, lines, or polygons. And then if we're exporting a raster, it's going to be pixels, right? So we're going to create new here in Illustrator. And we're just going to go with a letter. Um, right now it's showing us inches. It might show up the first time you open it in points but I always change it to inches because that just makes sense for page sizes for me. So 8.5 by 11 in portrait. Uh, we're going to go with the CMYK color mode and I always do all my designs there and I'll explain that when I lecture about color and my raster effects nice and high like 300 ppi and we'll create this. So just a nice new document. Great. Alright, so if you haven't been in Illustrator for a while or it's your first time, up here is our menu. Uh, there's a lot of uh, nice options underneath here. File, uh, save, save as, all the usual suspects there. On the left hand side are our tools. When you hover over one, it tells you the name and it also gives you the keyboard shortcut. And then over here, these are our panels. So right now it's showing us our properties and it has different things like what units you're going to have, um, so on and so forth, keyboard increments. Um, something nice to turn on sometimes is your rulers. So there we have our rulers. We could also go to view and then rulers and then hide or show rulers. Um, there are multiple ways to do everything in Illustrator. So underneath this drop down are the different uh, workspaces. I'm going to go for Essential Classic and that changes it a little bit. Again, another way to do it would be go to Windows, Workspace, and then choose which one you want. Once you get to the place that you're most happy with, you can also do New Workspace and then save it with something like Kev's Favorite. Okay, so we're going to need a few of our panels here. The most important one, Window, Oops, excuse me. Layers. Layers are the key to everything in Illustrator. This is how you stay organized. All vector objects end up living in a layer. All raster objects, for that matter, will be in a layer as well. Uh, another one that's, uh, that's very handy is the stroke palette. So we'll grab the stroke. Stroke palette might come in and have very few options. If you go to this little triple bar and say show options, you'll get everything. And this is where you can change the size of the stroke. You can turn it into a dashed line, so on and so forth. And then uh, for today, since we'll be working with symbols, we're going to open up the Windows symbols. Bring those guys over here. I don't like any of these pre-generated symbols, so I'll get rid of all those and say yes. Very good. And then uh, we're going to need to look at some swatches, which is just one way of looking at color. So we'll go down and say swatches, and then here's our swatch library with some pre-made colors. You can see how it wants to dock, so you can dock these different palettes together, and then they'll move around as a unit. Very good. Okay, so to start out, everything that comes out of GIS that is a point value is going to have a symbol. And we can make our own symbols here inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to go over here to my rectangle tool and just select it. And right now, it has a fill, which is white and a stroke which is black. By selecting these individuals you can change them. So instead of white let's go with a, a nice yellow and a red outline. right? And as I drag and start to draw here on screen you see the square and or rectangle start to show up. Without pu pushing any of the modifying keys you can make it any shape you want. If I hold down shift it constrains it to be a perfect square. So there we have our perfect square. And right now, uh, it's in the uh, selection mode. Direct selection would allow you to look at the corners. Let me zoom in. I'm going to do control space bar. Gives me my zoom tool. Zoom in. Any tool that you are in, when you do control space, it takes you right to zoom and then it pops back. So right now I have this, this tool here, which is direct selection, which allows me to select individual corners. So I could grab one of these corners and stretch it out if I wanted to. I don't want to do that today. Um, the V tool or the selection tool gives me uh, m more of these kind of um, pull-out toggles. And if I hold down shift and grab a corner, I can resize this thing proportionally. If I didn't hold down shift, I'd be able to actually warp it. You know? Okay, so this thing has a yellow fill and a red stroke. The stroke palette will allow us to change the stroke size. So you can see it getting bigger. Um, I could change what the corners look like. Right now they're square. They could be rounded or they could be mitered. We'll go with uh, square ones for now. We'll take this back down to say one stroke. Okay, so that's how we make a vector object. Now this object can be turned into a symbol. So once I have something selected, if I go to my symbol palette from the little drop down here, new symbol, this will pop up. 
and let's just call this town, for example. And then I always like to change my symbols to graphics that are static and say OK. And now you can see that this is a symbol. It also has changed what's on screen, gives us this little center point in it. So <clears throat> now we have a town symbol. We can drag those right onto our workspace and they will match exactly the original one that we made. Okay, so I'm going to delete those. Now where is all this stuff living? Well, they're living over here in layers. In layers, we have one symbol of town. I'll drag another town symbol over. There we go. Now we have two symbols of town. This layer should be called something uh, instead of just layer one. If you don't name your layers, it gets really confusing. So we'll call this our towns. Or actually, I'm going to call it symbols because I'm going to put lots of things in here. Um, when you export your layers out of uh, ArcGIS, they will be pre-named, but you still end up making some of your own layers. So you can do a lot of things over here in the layer palette. You can lock it, and then we can't select anything on screen. You can make things disappear with the eyeball or turn them back on. You can also go to individual objects and uh, make them disappear one at a time. Um, you can just double click on the name to rename it. If you double click on the little uh, icon next to it, it allows you to change the color and I always like to have a color that isn't in the color of the object, so we'll go with something like burgundy. Let's see. Uh, that makes it hard because there's already red. I'll try something else. How about a blue? There we go. Light blue. There we go. So there's the colors of the selection. All right. So always have your layer palette open. Be looking at your actual layers. So I'm going to get rid of uh, one of these, and we're going to make another one using our tools over here. From the drop down next to the rectangle tool, there are other options. The ellipse tool lets us make circles. So let me change what I've got going. I'll go with a dark green stroke and a lighter green fill. Great. And now I'll start to draw a circle. If I hold down shift, it makes it a perfect circle again. If I hold down the space bar at the same time, it lets me move it as I draw it. Uh, or I can just uh, go ahead and move it after the fact. I can move things with uh, the keys. So this is moving it with the arrow keys up and down, left and right. Um, if you have a very small increment, you can uh, increase that by holding the shift and then it does it times 10. All right. And uh, this could be uh, another version of our town or this could be a point of interest, right? So we will do new symbol, POI, graphic, static, okay. Boom, now it's another symbol. Now I'm going to go in here and do one more. Um, polygon tool and the star tool will let you do basically the same thing. The star tool is mostly for stars, but you can create a star also with the polygon tool. But let's go ahead and grab our star tool. Let's change our colors one more time. Let's go with a light blue fill and a dark blue stroke. And as I start to draw, hold down my space to move it. If I do shift, it squares it up. Um, now, with the star tool, if I were to hit the up and down arrow keys, it changes the number of points on the star. So there's a standard one, and you can go down to just a four point, or eventually it becomes a triangle, right? So I'm going to go back up to our five point star. Uh, if I hit shift again, it'll line it up. If I hit alt, it makes it sharp, and that's what we want. Instead of it being kind of like a Carl Jr. star, we're going to go with a sharp star. So there we go. And that might be our capitals. So we're going to go make another symbol. And call this capital. And that's a graphic, static. Okay. All right. So now we've got a few symbols. Um, you can also make vector objects that are multi part. So, what if I were to go back to a black stroke and a white fill and then go in and get my star tool again? I'm going to start my star. I'm going to hit my arrow keys down until I have a triangle and go ahead and make it roughly the same size as everything else. I hold down the shift again so that it squares up to the page, let it go. And then I could draw another one or I could get my direct selection tool. And if I hold down the alt, you get these two little double arrows down there. It makes a copy of it. And then I'm going to hold down shift and resize this guy and move it right down here. And I'm going to go ahead and make it black fill. Okay. So now I've got two triangles. What does this look like? It looks like a camping symbol, right? So if I select both of them before I turn them into a symbol, depending on which tools you're using, you get different options up here in the menu. So in this particular case, we've got some nice align tools. I'm going to align these center and then align them on the bottom. And now I have a pretty decent little camping symbol. So I'll go ahead and create a new symbol. And we'll 
got a graphic, static, say OK. All right, and so where are all these living now? They're all living over here in my layers. You can see all my different ones. So once you have things that are symbols, then you have a lot of different options. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, just doing control minus to zoom out on the page. And let's say that um, when you export out of uh, ArcGIS, you get a bunch of points. So I'll go ahead and just make a small circle here. Just going to make it black on black. There we go. Perfect. Hold down shift. There we go. So that's a little circle there. And that might be the kind of points that you get out of ArcGIS. And I'm going to hold down the Alt and just make it. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Hold down my Alt and see if I can make some copies. Yep. So let's just say you had you know, a bunch of populated places come out of ArcGIS. I'm going to go ahead and delete these symbols because I don't need them. I have them in my symbol palette. I can bring them out anytime I want. So here I have just some good old vector objects that came out of ArcGIS. And those are representing my populated places. Um, once I brought them out, if I wanted to say, OK, I'm just going to put the town symbol in here. And then I'm going to drag a selection over everything. So the symbol that I drug onto the artboard and all of my um, populated places. And I'm going to go up to File scripts and I'm going to use this great script and you can get this script from Kelso Cartography I'll link it in the bottom of the description of the video find and replace graphics centered and what it's going to do is replace all of those original vector objects with the symbol that I drug out on screen Ta-da! and now we have all of these guys as towns but it turns out my town symbol is just too big right? so what if I were to go in and double click on my town now I'm able to go ahead and, um, and modify this thing. So if I go ahead and get my V tool and I'm going to shrink it down, holding the shift down, making it smaller, then I'm going to hold down the um, space bar to move it. Is that going to allow me? Well, I can just drop it off. It is important to move it back to center. All right, so with this symbol, it's important that this little center be lined up right in the center of things. Got no crosshairs. Okay, so right now I've been modifying my symbol, so I'll go ahead and uh, exit my symbol and what you'll see is that on screen everything has been modified as well um, and we can do we can kind of compare it to my old symbols if you select one and you go up to replace now you have the option to replace them with all of them so the capital you can see how much bigger the capitals were so it looks like that capital was uh, is maybe too big um, you could do a lot of things so I could go in and uh, replace uh, that capital or modify it. I could also break the link. So right here, I could break the link and now it's just a vector object. And then I can go ahead and make it smaller. Sorry, what am I trying to do? There we go. If I hold down Shift and Alt at the same time, it will um, reduce its size but stay in the exact same location. And that's more like it. And now I would make a new symbol. All right, so this would be uh, Newtown or new capital actually. Static. All right. Um, it's a really, really powerful tool with symbols. So once you have your things turned into symbols, it's very easy to replace them. So let's say actually this wasn't a town, it was camping. We can go up and just replace it with the camping symbol. If it was too big, we could modify it or reduce the overall size. Now there are some decent map symbols in here if you look for them. So again, just kind of the way we did the swatch library, if we go to symbol libraries, go down and find maps, and then all of these symbols show up. And you know they can be helpful. Um, certainly, the uh, the camping symbol that they have, we could drag that over. The parking symbol, right? Um, the airport symbol, and now we're losing track of all of our symbols, so we just expand the palette. Uh, the north arrow. So all those can kind of work. I really don't like the way that they did their shields, like this interstate shield. I think is a little bit too skinny and it's crushed. But you can go in and modify any of these. So uh, and then you can close this. And now we can drag these guys so we can see what our camp symbol is. So these are kind of sized properly for what fits on maps. So maybe that's a good way for you to you know, kind of resize some of yours. Um, but uh, now that we have all of those in there, we can change anything out for anything else. So that could be our parking. Oops, I think I actually chose airport. Now, 
that airport is red, okay, fine, but maybe I don't want all of my airports to be red. So if I go ahead and either edit the symbol or break link, break link would be to make another one, edit would be to edit the one that exists. This just takes me right into the world there. And now I can look at its individual parts in here. They got a lot of extras, but it looks like it's just a red fill. So we can to change that to black and then go back out. And now we have a little black aircraft if that's what we wanted. All right, so that's symbols in cartography and how we deal with them inside of Illustrator. It's just a, a quick once over. There are definitely other options, but um, probably enough for you to consume at this point. All right, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.